Okie dokie, I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video with some of the experience that I've learnt over the years of running. I'm currently at four proper ultras, 50 and above, 11 maras and 105 half marathons or longer out to marathon distance. So I'd like to think I know a thing or two having learnt a uh, bit over the years, not claiming I'm an expert, just letting you know where I'm at with what I've done. I've got a list of points that I'm gonna go over. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two, maybe you won't. If you do, cool. If you don't, all right. There are no shortcuts when it comes to training and getting quicker for a marathon. Those who think you can just turn it around in, I don't know, three months, six months, or whatever, and get to some crazy time or crazy time goal, then it won't happen. You, you can go nuts and the body will probably say no and maybe result in an injury. Those who jump into it too quickly usually end up either being out of action for a little while and then losing motivation or other issues where you just, you can't go on that trajectory up to insane speeds that quick. So yeah, no shortcuts, be patient. It takes time. It's taken me many years to get to where I've gotten and yeah, I can take you back to just briefly when I was in Thailand, I wanted to do a sub four and I blasted off at a good pace, the pace that I needed, ended up walking a whole stretch from about 33 onwards and just squeezed under four, you know, and now I'm at the stage where I could run much closer towards that three hour mark. So that was years ago and now I'm here, you know. Uh, sure, if you're not working, then you can spend a whole lot more time recovering and all that, but for the majority of us normal folk, then you'll have to work like me, and that means being even more patient and allowing more time to get to the goal that you want to get to. Halves do not compare to marathons. If you've run one at intensity, a full, you'll know the difference. So people that say, oh, you know, I went and ran a marathon, but they competed in a half at a full, doesn't mean the same thing. You'll know the significance when you run a full, and that's not to say we're better or anything, you'll just, you'll realize the difference. Running a half at intensity is not nearly as sapping on the body as what running a full is, and also the achievement feeling is completely different. A full is so much more regarded once you've done it and yeah you'll see the difference if you do it you'll know exactly what i mean when the time comes injury time off it happens injuries happen to i would say everyone uh, if you think that you're not going to experience it then maybe you haven't been doing it long enough even if it's something minor that means you're out of action for just a few weeks then it sucks and it takes a toll on your head but you can just continue to remain calm not frustrated, not angry, because it is what it is and these things happen. We're trying to demand different, in many cases, unnatural things from our bodies, running on surfaces that are not natural, like concrete and tarmac and running in shoes for one. So just know that when injuries happen, even if it's for a month or five weeks or whatever, then you're not gonna lose heaps of fitness. From my experience, it's it would be months where you had to have of not doing almost anything for you to lose a lot of fitness like i've had periods of you know two weeks off running or 10 days off running or even longer like when i fracture my hip and it doesn't disappear that quick so know that you're not going to lose fitness and don't panic just remain calm remain relaxed and see it through get to the point get to the point where you can test it and say is the body happy enough for me to get going again or is it too soon? And just know that it'll happen. It's not the end of the world though. You can overcome it. Taper feels, tapers are awesome. Obviously they have a great effect proven uh, with Ironman athletes, marathon running, whatever else, big events. So try and get it right. You know, three weeks for a big event seems to work great for me and for other people. Uh, for a half, a hard half, I would only do two weeks, depending on the duration of whatever the event is. And yeah, know that there will be a period in the middle where you don't feel so great. Like for me, day nine, day 10 is usually quite a yuck feeling. And once you get through that, 
you come out the other side and you get to a stage where you're the least fatigued but retain the most fitness and it's an amazing feeling to try and get the timing right and also be able to sleep and keep everything as normal as possible when you're starting to feel quite fresh but then you don't want to sleep because you don't need the sleep because you don't need to recover as much it's quite a weird thing but it's yeah one thing uh, to kind of learn and to try and get it right and keep the mind calm is one of the biggest things in the taper that I find is essential to trying to keep sleep right and keep everything else as normal as possible getting to the point where you're ready to go into a big event practice makes perfect I'm definitely not perfect but three weeks works great three weeks works great for me and I think that for many other people too it, it'll be the case especially into a marathon or into an Ironman half Ironman any kind of big event like that it works cool and you feel great <laughs> Intensity compared to the Milo training. Training for what I'm trying to do now, trying to run sub three at a marathon distance, is way harder than Milo training. Milo training takes its toll on your head because you're out there for so many hours running a very, very long time. And you have to be mentally prepared for literally hours on your feet of doing perhaps not the most exciting thing or you know not running the fastest or yeah, uh, but doing reps around the park like I'm doing or staring at the, the wall on the treadmill for an hour at a time in the morning and then again in the afternoon, that is way tougher. It is so hard to get this right from what I've seen that so much has to go into it. You have to get the training to a point where your body is capable of running that speed over the distance you have to get the taper perfect you have to not be injured you have to get the fueling right you have to do so many things and for your event to be on for the weather to be perfect for it not to be windy for it to be the ideal conditions for a pb day it's tough Whereas with the miler, it was a case of covering the distance over the time and not being outside the, the time limits. And yeah, I mean, t from what I've seen, the, the training for that and what I've experienced, it, it wasn't as tough. Yeah, I did a huge week, 165k week, but running lots of time on the treadmill and knowing that you have to do that day in day out and increasing the pace gradually over months over years to get to the stage where it may be a possibility soon for me way way harder hands down way way harder marathon at intensity is way harder than miler training but go and have a crack at both if that's your jam if you want to do that they're, they're both awesome achievements and i hope that if you want to, you get to experience it and enjoy it like I have done. You have to know why you want it. If you don't have a good enough reason, then it's not gonna work the way that you want it to. You know, if you kind of like half in, half out, then it's not gonna, you're not gonna hit the time or the goal that you want because you, you really have to be Oh, I wouldn't say all, well, definitely all into your training, but all into the reasons for doing it. Like, uh, especially if it's a quite lofty time goal, like what I have, then you, you're going to have to put a lot into it for you, from your life and really prioritize it over other things like the recovery. Today, I want to go and do a whole bunch of things, but I know that I just need to rest and keep the feet up and, and do that to prepare for what's to come tomorrow and the next day and how you're going to feel the next week when the fatigue hits or when rest week comes and you're kind of struggling through those runs or whatever and yeah I, I have solid reasons for doing it I, I want to do it for a personal goal I also want to rip the vegan message uh, I think it would just be an amazing target to achieve something that very few humans walking this earth will ever ever do and that is special there's something about it it's just a random distance 42.195 kilometers but it's a special distance and it has significance with people that have run that distance and it's really really cool and to be able to hopefully hit that time goal will be 
great. So know why you want it and stay strong until you get to the goal that you want with it. Speaking of achievements, running a marathon like throughout and not stopping, not going to the toilet and all that is a very special achievement and it's something that, like I touched on earlier, halves just do not compare. A uh, full marathon is very, very special and congratulations to you if you've done it, if you've done a five hour or 4.30 or a four or a 3.30 or a 3.15, then good on you and you know how hard it is if you've done it and if you want to do it, then 